In this video, we'll install Wingate 8 and make a proxy connection from a LAN client to test connectivity. Due to the potential for driver conflicts, we recommend against installing third-party firewall or security software on your Wingate server. And while it is possible to run the Windows firewall on your Wingate server, there are some features that it will interfere with. Download the installation file from wingate.com. I've already downloaded the installation file and saved it to the desktop. The Wingate Network Driver provides firewall, NAT and VPN functionality and we recommend that you do install it. Wingate will use the email address that you enter here to build notification emails. Enter a name with the email address enclosed by angle brackets. The sending address can be left blank and both addresses can be changed later. Once your machine is rebooted, open the Wingate Management Console from the System Tray, the Quick Start Bar, or from the Start menu. Choose the localhost profile for the first login to complete the installation. Your Wingate server will not run without an activated license. Activation can be completed online or offline if you do not have internet access from your Wingate server. The License Manager allows you to either activate a purchase license key, request a trial license, or activate a free through user license. Click the link for more information about our free license. I'm going to activate a Wingate trial. If you have any problems activating a license, email sales at wingate.com. You can activate two 30-day trials within a six-month time period. Note that while the engine is starting or stopping, the Wingate icon turns yellow. It's red when the engine is stopped and blue when it is running. Select your user database provider. There are a few things to consider, so press F1 here to open the help file for more information. There are three options to choose from, the Wingate user database, the Windows user and groups connector, and the Active Directory connector, which is only available if you have a professional or enterprise license. I'm going to choose the Wingate user database provider. Note the login details that show the username administrator with a blank password. One final restart and the installation is complete. Your first login takes you straight to the welcome page. You'll find links to videos on our YouTube channel, a list of help topics and key concepts, and a few of the initial tasks to complete as part of your Wingate configuration. It is important to verify your network adapter settings. Wingate uses the IP address of the adapter to decide whether an adapter is internal or external. Internal adapters face the network and services will be bound to them by default. External adapters face the internet and won't have services bound to them by default. If you bind a service to an external adapter, you're opening that service to the internet which has obvious risks, so check your adapter settings. If you need to change any settings, simply double click the adapter and select the appropriate option. Return to the welcome page for the next task which is installing and configuring services. You'll find services on the control panel or just click the install configure services link. Wingate 8 installs with only the services necessary for basic operation so you'll need to install the services that you require. For example if you're going to use Wingate to provide DHCP for the network then you'll need to install the DHCP service. Note the startup type which is set to manual start stop. I want the DHCP service to start automatically so I'll set it to automatic. Click apply and go to the bindings tab and you'll see the interface that the service is bound to. Wingate uses the IP address of this adapter as the default gateway for the DHCP clients and will assign addresses in this range. I'm going to quickly install the DNS service as well using the same steps as we did for the DHCP service. Notice that both the DHCP and DNS services are now listed in the service panel and both show started. Now I just need to check client connectivity. I'm going to make a proxy connection from my LAN machine, so I go to Internet Options and enter the IP address and port of my proxy server. Now 
Now when I connect to Wingate.com, I can see the connection in the activity panel of the Wingate Management Console. So that's great, Wingate is set up and clients can connect through it to the internet, and it was a very quick and easy process. From here, you may want to think about controlling your web access, which is the next task on the welcome screen. There's also logging, setting up your dashboards, plugins and heaps more, so check out our YouTube channel, and as always, if you have any questions or need any assistance, don't hesitate to contact our support team by emailing support at wingate.com, or visit our website to find a dealer near you. Thanks for watching.